I recently paid a visit to Aquarium of the Bay. The experience was decent, but it mostly happened because I wanted to quell my guilt for almost never doing anything remarkable with the largest block of discretionary time available to most of us. The weekend. The day before the aquarium, I told myself, maybe we actually do something this weekend other than taking a walk, grabbing food, and heading home to watch YouTube or a movie. The insidious thing about living in San Francisco is that being a resident enables you to develop a natural complacency toward these San Francisco-related activities, whereas being a tourist motivates you to make the most of your short time in the city. But why is getting out and enjoying the city often harder if you actually live in the city? Everyone knows how expensive San Francisco is. If you live here and have a roof over your head, you're likely gainfully employed. Unless your job recently ended like the person whose voice you're hearing right now. Either way, the glitz and glam of the big city may look alluring in sitcoms or in your friend's Instagram stories, but that's not what life is really like in the big city, and San Francisco is no exception. There are 168 hours in a week. If you sleep anywhere from 5 to 8 hours per night, that is between 35 and 56 hours per week. If you're gainfully employed, you're likely spending another 40 hours per week on that job. Even if your commute is the time it takes for you to walk over to your desk for your remote job, you'll probably spend an additional hour or so each day to transition from being an actual human to the 9 hour block of being a vessel of labor to maintain your right to keep that roof. And under that roof, you need to maintain the quality of that space, so be sure to reserve some hours for that. Oh, and don't forget your nutrition, maintaining passable hygiene, running errands, and keeping up with your fitness goals. That leaves your discretionary time. Do you have hobbies? Do you watch any shows or movies? Do you spend hours on social media? All of that will eat into these discretionary hours. So consider that before you think you will move to a big city and start knocking off bucket list items on the regular. In order to film my movie, San Francisco, I had to put myself on a grueling schedule that essentially made my life all about finding time to travel to various parts of the city to film the neighborhoods I needed for my script. I've lived in San Francisco for nearly 8 years and admittedly there are countless neighborhoods and attractions I still wouldn't have experienced had I not made a movie that forced me to travel to every neighborhood within a span of a few months. Even then, there are still some things I haven't done that one may consider San Francisco bucket list items. For example, as of uploading this video, I've still never been to the top of Coit Tower and I've still never rode a cable car. In fact, 2021 was the first time I ever made a special visit to the Golden Gate Bridge, and that was six years after moving to San Francisco. And if you're between jobs, things aren't much different. Sure, your contract ending or getting laid off will give you those 40 hours per week back, but how discretionary are those quote-unquote free hours when they come with the responsibility of finding that next job? And sure, you may suddenly find yourself with enough time to knock off all of those San Francisco bucket list items you previously daydreamed about while at work, but any of those bucket list items that cost money would first require a spoonful of YOLO courage to help the no-income guilt go down. This is why in the two months between leaving Google and making this video, my discretionary time outside of job hunting has mostly consisted of spending nights and weekends doing what I normally would while employed. Things like watching new movies, going on camera walks to capture spring blooms, watching the NBA playoffs, capturing cable car b-roll for San Francisco video content, and fighting crowds so I could get treats from Pier 39. However, I will admit that developing a jaded attitude towards the city you live in is just a natural part of the hedonic treadmill that comes with taking what you have for granted. The reason I have to fight crowds at Pier 39 is because tourists see this city as aspirational whereas I see it as my home for the past nearly 8 years while often forgetting how badly many people want to move here. It's why despite being less than outgoing, doing both midweek and weekend walks of 1-2 to two hours is now a Raymond ritual. These walks exemplify the typical San Francisco residential experience, which is taking in scenery and people watching. Those outside of the city may be shocked to learn how little of the San Francisco life is Instagrammable, despite this being one of the most Instagrammable cities in the world. That's not to say there isn't the occasional city specific highlight that sneaks in. Oh, you tell me that. Let's go! Let's go, baby. 
I suppose people may interpret this video as an example of life is what you make it. I hate that saying, but I understand if people come to that conclusion, even though the point I'm trying to make is to be realistic about how you will spend your time if you move to San Francisco. And this message isn't exactly novel. Recently, the algorithm has served me a healthy dose of vlogs about, for example, New York City realistic day in the life videos where these NYC vloggers basically just show themselves running basic errands and walking their neighborhoods. This video is in part inspired by that trend, but it's also inspired by your enthusiastic response to my video, The Truth About Living in San Francisco, which seems to have brought in some new eyeballs, which I thank you all for.